Dipping into the mailbag for a Monday. Is there a preferred championship path for the Boston Celtics? They've got a tough upcoming stretch. Does that mean anything for the playoffs? The difference between Danny versus Brad building a team and Poku in Boston. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can't. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with Hilario B. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day and I've got you covered every Monday through Friday plus bonus podcasts on the weekends wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure you're subscribed, uh, whatever app you use. Apologies for the kind of weirdness this past weekend and even on this Monday where the audio podcast is delayed until noon on Monday. Normally it's there for you when you wake up in the morning. Uh, if you are listening to this on your way home, it showed up late. We're going through a transition uh, to a new uh, uh, provider, basically, for our uh, podcasts, our audio podcasts. So apologies for the late start. It's a one-time thing, and it's why I couldn't get you the audio version of the podcast over the weekend. That is on YouTube. You can watch the show on YouTube at all times. YouTube is available. This this podcast is dropping at its normal time on YouTube. So welcome to all the YouTube watchers and all of that. Uh, my name is John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal and for you because you're the consumer. You're the fan. You're the Celtics fan. And I'm just here trying to make your life as a Celtics fan better somehow, if I can. Today I'm opening up the mailbag. I like to do it once a week. You can go to johncorrales.com slash mailbag to submit your questions. johncorrales.com slash mailbag. That's how you submit your questions. It's the only way I'm going to get the questions. So that's how you get involved. And let's, you see, if you're on the YouTube page, the rundown on the, well, it's the right side of your screen. It's to my left. Uh, later on, we'll talk about Poku. We'll talk about Danny and Brad. We'll talk about fixing the all-star game. Let's start with a preferred championship path. Mike says, what's your ideal path to, to Bannery team? Personally, I like to play Brooklyn, the team that made the dumbest trade of all time, then the Bucks, and then the Knicks. Uh, but I truly don't care who comes out of the West. So my real answer, the real answer is I don't care. I don't care what the path is. Uh, whatever the path is, as long as the Celtics get there, then they get there. As long as the Celtics win a championship, then I don't care who they play. It could be, it could be Cavs, Knicks, and whatever who cares who cares right that's that's my that as a as a in my player brain it's like who, who's in front of me all right great i got to prepare for that team so that that's my real answer but for fans you love a story right you love the you know ooh there's this drama behind it there's this there's that you you want a little something extra you want a little extra juice so here's my ideal, you know, shut the F up. Can't say nothing about the Celtics path to a title first Miami. So just get Miami out of the way. And I'll, I'll get to Peter's question. This answers Peter's question. Who do you think this, the Celtics will play in the first round? Who do you want? Who don't you want? He said the heat. I don't want the heat because I'm bored with them. I'm sick of them. I'm like, I, I'm sick of the whole thing. Just, just, just rebuild already. But regardless, you want you want everybody to, to shut the F up? Great. Miami, first round, sweep them. Just get a sweep, shut people up, fine. You want to give me Miami? Give me Miami, fine. Next up, Philadelphia, because I always like to see the Celtics beat, the, beat Philly. Uh, if Embiid comes back healthy and people are like, ooh, ooh, Embiid's healthy, what are they going to do? It's still Embiid, it's still the Sixers. So second round, got to be the second round because you're not going to meet them in the conference finals. They're not going to get there. So second round, Philly. Third round, Milwaukee. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get Giannis. Let's get those guys. Let's, you know, see the Celtics beat Giannis, beat Doc, 
have Doc lose out again. I mean, that the, at least in this case, he'd get to the conference finals. And then Denver, beat to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. And I feel like the Celtics beating Denver, and this gets me to Perry's question, when, not if, the Celtics make the finals, which of the following would be an easier matchup, Denver or the Clippers? Give me Denver. First of all, Denver is the reigning champs, so you want to beat them. Secondly, I know the Celtics lost to the, the Nuggets at home, but I know the Celtics are also pretty confident coming out of that game. That's You play that game seven more times, the Celtics are winning four of those, you know, or six more times. The Celtics are winning four of those. So they feel confident in that. I think if you go back and you look closely at the, the, the final, the down the stretch execution, I think Boston closes out a lot of those games having, if it plays out the exact same way. Meanwhile, the Clippers have a lot, like obviously they've got great size, great length on the wings. It's not the easiest matchup in the world. Length on the wings uh, is something that Denver doesn't necessarily have quite like the Clippers have. So if you're looking about matchups, I think Denver's the better matchup for Boston. They can attack multiple guys. There's like two, three guys they can attack. They can attack Jokic. They'll go at Jokic early. They'll try to wear him out. He's going to play a lot of minutes and he'll obviously be MVP level guy. But I think if you can get Denver, then I feel like that's, that's the path. Miami, Philly, Milwaukee, Denver. That's the can't say nothing about the Celtics. They 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 fit all the narratives, whatever. That's it. But honestly, I don't care. New York is probably going to be in this mix. I think if New York is healthy, it very easily could be Celtics-Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's going to be a tough team. That might be the toughest competition Boston faces because they've got crafty, shifty young uh, you know guard in, in Brunson. Ananobi's healthy. They've got length to to fend Tatum or you know in Brown. They've got strength. They're a real tough team. So the Knicks are, are are the one team in the East that I'm like, hmm, that actually could be, you know, a tough matchup. But I still don't expect that matchup to go seven. Samuel asks, the next six games seem to be a tough stretch for the Celtics. Uh, if the Celtics lose more than one of these games, will you be a little scared? Um, I, I'm, I'm past being scared. So my answer is no, I'm past being scared about the, the Celtics in regular season games. I don't think, uh, that is going to be an issue. So let's look at quickly. The Celtics have, uh, they're off on Sunday. They practice on Monday. They play Philly on Tuesday. And then they've got two days off. This is a nice stretch here for them. Uh, by the way, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet, any winning $5 bet. That's $150. Bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So this is a nice little stretch here. You come home, you know, you had the all-star break, a couple of wins on the road. That's nice. Uh, Philly on Tuesday, a couple of days off, and then Dallas, Golden State, and, and then the road trip, Cleveland, Denver, Phoenix, Portland, Utah, on the back-to-back. That Utah game, ugh. Just, I'm just telling you now, Utah on a back-to-back at Portland, you lose a time zone, you lose an hour because there's a time zone switch. You're in altitude. It's the last game of the road trip. I'm already chalking that up as a loss. Just letting you know. Don't get freaked out if they lose to the Utah Jazz. They'll probably lose a couple of these games. They, they can't win all of them. So but I'm not worried about how individual games go. I think they've proven just about everything they need to prove at this point. There's 25 games left. If, if this isn't who they are, if if a single game changes your opinion of this team, then you don't have a high opinion of this team. By now, you should either be bought in or you don't you don't believe in them. A game, a loss against Denver, you know, a loss on the road, a lot, two losses out west, uh, you know, Phoenix and Utah. You would that's unless they lose all five games on the road and they look horrible doing it and something something is up, then I'm not if they lose, even if they lose to Denver, even if they go 0-2 against Denver this year, I don't 
care so much. Uh, I really don't. So I, I see who these guys are. I see a lot of things that people sh- are, are worried about have, have kind of been answered. They're not playing down to a lot of the competition the way they used to. They, they are just, a lot of these bad habits are gone. So I'm past single game, changing your mind. Like that's it. If, if you're a person who's going to say after, like if they lose to the Utah jazz, well, they can't be a championship team. If they lose to the jazz, I'm out. All right. Well then you were never in, in the first place. I have supreme confidence in this team. So that's, that's where I stand on that. All right. When I come back, we'll get into the um, All-Star game and the end of the roster, that 15th spot, and the difference between Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens. That's all coming up. Today's show is brought to you by Grammarly. Now, I use Grammarly to help me, especially it's so helpful for me when it's 1.30 in the morning and I've got something to write. And I'm just my I'm brain dumping onto a piece of paper. And Grammarly is like, uh, you got this thing you need to fix, this you need to fix, this you need to fix. And it's very helpful for me as I try to write cohesive pieces for you to read on Boston Sports Journal. Now you don't have to write big narrative stories like I do, but you do have to write an email. You do have to write something to people that needs to be read and processed. And that's where Grammarly can come in with emails and reports and presentations. They have, uh, you know, uh, AI, uh, technology there that can kind of be your writing partner to help you communicate more effectively, tell it what you need to say, and it can come up with some prompts and help you along the way. 96% of Grammarly users report that Grammarly helps them craft more impactful writing. It works over, uh, across 500,000 apps and websites. And by understanding your writing in context, it provides uh, relevant personalized suggestions. If you're a more casual writer, like I am, it provides more casual suggestions. So it's, you know, your tone is matched by Grammarly. You can save time with one click, go from editing drafts in hours to seconds. 93% of professionals using Grammarly premium report that it helps them get more work done. So go check it out, make a bigger impact at work with Grammarly. Sign up and download for free at Grammarly.com slash podcast. You can see it at the bottom of the screen here on the YouTube page. Grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash podcast. Easier said, done. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown Sports today. The first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube is now on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. So go if you've got Amazon Fire TV or the Fire Stick, go to the free Fire TV channels app. Find Lockdown Sports today, 24-7, top stories of the day. You might even find the Lockdown Celtics podcast on there. So go check that out. All right, let's get back to the mailbag questions, starting with uh, Wowie. That's the name you put down. Okay, Wowie, a uh, question. Now, you're from the Philippines. So maybe this is – the the question here is about the All-Star game and going – uh, world versus USA. There have been a lot of questions here uh, about the All Star Game. Trying to fix the All Star Game. This is Wowie's question is about uh, like the tenth World versus US suggestion that I've gotten. There have been others paying them more, paying them less, suspending them uh, from next year's All Star Game if you don't try. All kinds of suggestions. Uh, I, I'm going to say I'm anti world versus uh, U.S. because I think we don't realize that the world team is not very deep. You got a lot of top heavy talent that's from around the world, but there were only seven uh, players, international players, on the All Star teams combined, and that counts Paolo Bancaro, who is playing for Team USA, by the way. So, but he's got Italian status. Carl Anthony Towns, who's American, but is also Puerto Rican status, or wait, Dominican status. Uh, Joel Embiid, who was hurt and didn't even play. Uh, and also 
he had multiple countries that and he's going to play for team USA. So that's not even, you know, that yes, those are international players, but there's only seven. So you still would have to f- add five international players who didn't make the all-star team. And that would remove five USA players that made it. And that would just, there's not enough. There's the top end international talent is huge. The mid international talent. It's like, they're either awesome or eh, so, so right. There's not a ton of mid level international talent. That's all-star caliber, right? There's not that low end all-star fringe all-star. So, and we're not putting like Boyan Bogdanovich in there just because he's an international player. So that's, that's not going to work for the all-star game. I think my, I, I say my solution, it's, it's what I agree with, but many other people have suggested is going with the tournament style, like the, the rising stars challenge, four teams of seven to shorter games and have them compete. And the, the prospect of getting eliminated will make people play hard. Cause if you get eliminated in the first game, you don't get as many highlights. And if you don't get your highlights, then what's the point of being at the all-star game, right? You know, if you don't get to fill your Instagram with your windmill dunks, then why did you even go? So guys will be trying and playing harder. All right, let's move on to the end of the Boston roster. A couple of questions there. Malachi is any idea who the Celtics will add to their final 15 man roster. I don't see Kata being upgraded with the acquisition of Tillman. Now, Winnie also asks, will Kata's minutes be affected after the Xavier Tillman trade? Uh, Winnie also adds Jaden Springer gives less time for JD Davison, Shafi McHiluk, and asks about the balance between development of these two players and the addition of these guys. So let's start with Kata. It's interesting. Kata, two things are happening at the same time that you have to understand with Demaish Kata. First, he's a two way player. You get 50 games played in the NBA as a two way player. And he's up to like 40, 40, 41, something like that. So he's only got like nine or 10 games left to play. So with 25 left, it's going to look like, oh, they got Tillman and he stopped playing. And that might also be part of it, but he's, he's almost out of games. So if he runs out of games, then the, he's either going to need to be upgraded or that's it. He's out of games and he's just done for the season. Can't play uh, for the Celtics anymore. That's what the two-way contract is. So I haven't seen a lot of guys kind of run up against that, but we'll see. He could get upgraded. They could leave it open. You know, there's no need to fill that 15th spot, right? There's no need to fill that 15th spot. You could go out and uh, take a flyer on somebody. You could try to maybe find a big or something like that, but I don't know. I just feel like maybe you see if the what the buyout market looks like, and maybe there's somebody on the buyout market that you're like, oh, okay, this is, um, we're interested in this guy, and we'll see. So, but I would not be surprised if they leave it open. Now, as far as Davison and those guys, and the addition of Springer, look, the guys at the end of the bench like that, the fringe NBA guys. It, I hate to say it, you got a short short window to make your case. And Davison has had a little bit of time now to make his case to make this roster. And I, I don't know that he's going to get there. You know, I just don't know that he's going to get there. Um, I feel like, first of all, he's kind of up against, you got holiday, you got Derek White, you got Peyton Pritchard. Who, who are you going to be the fourth guard? Um, at that point, you, you're fighting to be at the end of the bench. I think Davison might be better served trying to hook on somewhere else where he might have better opportunity. Like, appreciate what you've done here as part of the main Celtics and all of that. But um, I just don't, I don't see that. So, and Street McCulloch is short term. He's he's done. He's done after this year. So, bringing in, bringing in Jaden Springer, you take the opportunity to get a guy who's already playing NBA level defense, and see if you can't 
get him the the offense there. So I hate to say it, but if that nudges Davison out, then it nudges Davison out, and he's he's going to go get his opportunity somewhere else. Let's finish up this segment with Ryan's question about how would you compare Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens as GM? Similarities and differences. Do you prefer one over the other? I prefer anybody who gets the job done. So I think Brad, The here's the difference between Danny and Brad. Brad doesn't care who wins the trade as long as the Celtics win the trade. You know what I mean? Like it, he doesn't care if the other team has a, a win as well. Right. He doesn't care if like you gave up Marcus smart to Memphis Memphis. Now you don't know if that was a, a win for Memphis, but if they were healthy, that looked like, Hey, wow. Memphis did it. Memphis wins and the Celtics win right in a deal to get Chris Porzingis. So didn't really, it didn't really matter to, to Brad, um, getting drew holiday for Robert Williams and Malcolm Brogdon didn't really matter to Brad. If, if, the Blazers could make a case for like, oh, wow, we, we, we kind of got a win out of this as well. So Danny has to win trades. Danny cares. He wants it to be lopsided. He wants it to be a fleecing. If he's not fleecing the other team, he's not doing the deal. Like that's kind of where he's been. Now, maybe he's going to soften on that a little bit, but that's where he's gotten. And I think it goes back to, I've said this a million times, the Justice Winslow trade or potential trade, his pursuit. He very nearly gave up way too much for Justice Winslow. It would have been a disaster. I remember distinctly him coming out of that that night, that draft night. And he was like, whew, I almost, I almost made a big mistake. You know, he almost, I almost wildly overpaid for Justice Winslow. Like he knows that he almost did that. And since then, he he's just been like, I'm going to be sure that we're winning this trade. Brad's like, yeah, first round pick, whatever. So whatever gets the job done is, is my thing. And I think Brad's more likely to kind of get the job done because he doesn't care about this other stuff. All right. We're going to get into some other stuff uh, here, uh, including what causes certain players to gravitate toward one, towards one another national TV games and Poku in Boston, Talk about all that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Now, Stitch Fix is going to uh, make you look good, right? That's their job. They make you look good. You know that you get that instant confidence boost. When you walk out the door and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm looking. Kind of like dust yourself off, brush the dirt off your shoulders, feeling good. Stitch Fix is basically a stylist who gets your style. They know your size. They know your budget. They do all the shopping for you. But they, they send you a box. You look at it. You try it on. You say, I like this. I like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. The stuff you like, you keep. The stuff you don't like, send it back. Shipping returns exchanges, always free. You can easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that work with you. I know it's tough. You're working, you're busy. What's the trend? What's hot right now? I have no idea. You give your stylist your size, your budget, the style, and that's it. You order boxes when you want. No subscription required. They just send five just for you pieces, plus outfit recommendations, pro styling advice. You keep what works. You send back the rest. So, so easy. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on stitchfix.com slash locked on that stitchfix.com slash locked on. Thanks for making locked on Celtics. Your first listen every day. Remember when there's a game like there is on Tuesday, go to the Sirius XM app. Listen to the game. If you want, if you can't listen to the TV broadcast, whether it's a national TV game, a lot of you have been big stretch of national TV games. If you don't like the national broadcasters, shut the volume off into the Sirius XM app. You can listen to Grandy and Max. Sync them up with your video on the TV. Boom! 
There's your solution. So go check them out on the Sirius XM app. Let's get to uh, WD, who asks me, as a former player, do you have any insight in what causes certain players to gravitate towards each other uh, in game flow? Uh, talks about Jalen and Porzingis, Holiday and Porzingis, Tatum and White. Uh, is it, do these bonds just come with the game flow? Uh, is it talent and the ability to read matchups? Is it friendships off the court? Something else. Now, the, 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 the large answer is yes to all of that. It could be all of that. It could be a professional only relationship where two guys just click. They could be two very different players, but they just click. They work well. It's natural chemistry. That's one thing. Uh, could also be a, like a real off court connection. Now I know that when I was playing and I had like my, my close friends when, you know, we'd be down practice and go back to the dorms and in college and play video games, we would still be talking about like practices and we'd be able to just kind of talk about things just naturally on the floor when we're doing drills. Yeah. I, I can point out to, you know, my buddy, Ken, who we used to do the big man drills together, but like, Hey, your feet are this way, or you're fading on your jumper or something like that. Just like you have this natural kind of like conversation and you build that relationship where, you know, you, you figure out how to play off of each other. And we would set picks for one another and play a high, low game. And we just kind of be able to talk to each other the whole time. So that when you have that on court, off the court stuff, uh, that helps. And, and you can say things without it being like taken personally. And you, you hear Porzingis talk about that. He said like he and Jalen can talk to each other and say something. And it's not like a personal attack or anything like that. So there's that. Um, and hey, sometimes some guys just seek out the best players and say, I'm going to, I'm specifically going to develop a relationship with Tatum. I'm specifically going to specifically going to develop a relationship with Brown. Because if I can figure out how to play off those guys, I'm going to eat. I know I'm going to eat because once you're in with those guys, they're going to want you around, right? So that that helps as well. But it's any number of things. And it 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 doesn't help if you hate each other. That hurts. Uh, but if you can keep it professional and you can respect each other, that's the number one thing is respect each other. Then you can develop that that sort of chemistry. Floyd asks uh, from the UK, uh, when the Celtics are nationally televised on ESPN or TNT, what's the impact? Obviously, you get more views. Would it bring, bring more, a morale boost and force the Celtics to play better basketball since more people are watching? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Rajon Rondo, famous for national TV Rondo, right? This is where you set narratives. This is where, because... People come in for ESPN, for TNT. They study film and all that stuff, but this is their chance to see what's happening in these games. And if, I don't know, Jalen's having a big game, you're like, every time I see Jalen Brown play, he's awesome. So I'm going to trust what I see with my own eyes. And if he has an off day somewhere else, that's an off day. What I see is what I see. So yeah, that you can set narratives. You can make your cases for awards. You can make your cases for postseason teams and stuff like that. So absolutely there is uh, a boost uh, for everybody when there's a national TV game. There's more interest. Fans from around the country who maybe can't afford uh, League Pass. League Pass is expensive. Not everybody can afford to pay for that. Uh, you maybe don't get a chance to do all of the uh, alternate ways we'll call alternate ways to watch a game, but when it's on TNT or ESPN, there's your chance to watch your favorite team. So yeah, you're going to get more people. And then I see a boost on podcast views and listens and stuff like that. It, it, it does. It has an impact for everybody, especially when they win. Charlotte asks, uh, if you were allowed to add one rule to the NBA that is beneficial to the whole game in general, what would it be? Struggled with this, but I settled on the international goaltend rules. I just think it would, instead of uh, everybody worried about the goal, like it just, if the ball misses, put it back, just jump up, put it back and stop like jockeying for position and waiting and ooh, ooh did, did it come off? Like, no, 
If the ball misses, just put it in, right? Or swat it away, right? That's It's a live ball. To me, I don't care about it being above the cylinder. I think that that would be a fun little aspect. Um, it it would make it would make going for offensive rebounds uh, a little bit more fun, and it would just add a nice little element. I, I I like the international goaltending rules. Joe asks Poku. I'm thinking more long term financial roster flexibility restrictions looming. Cheap young talent, size with shooting capabilities ish. Uh, you know, look, Poku's an interesting guy. Because obviously the Thunder, like they, they have a good developmental program. And if, if he didn't work out there, then kind of makes you wonder if he's, you know, what's his, what are his capabilities here um, as a long-term NBA player, but also OKC is in a tough spot. They got a lot of picks They they might be making like some of these tough decisions. If, I talked about that that 15th roster spot. Maybe maybe Poku could be a guy that you you bring in. He's 7 feet tall, he blocks shots. He's if you can get that 3 to fall consistently and as everybody probably says with him, put a little weight on him, you know? Get him get him drinking some of those protein shakes and get him in the weight room. I don't know, he's he's a tantalizing prospect and could fit could fit along with Springer and Tillman and Jordan Walsh, uh, who I did get a question about Jordan Walsh from Nathaniel, uh, who asked, when will Jordan Walsh get decent minutes? I'm Next year is the year. It's not going to be this year. He's not ready this year. We shouldn't push him to be, make any. He's not ready this year. But next year, I think I think he has potential. I think there's, there's the potential for him to be a contributor next year. So, you know, between him and Springer and Poku, like that, that would be defense. You'd get a lot of defense there. Can you get the shooting out of those guys? If you can, then hey, maybe there's a bargain there to be had. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think there's there's going to be some competition for him, right? Like he's I, I, he's got to land somewhere. He's not done in the NBA, is he? I don't think he's done in the NBA. So. I see people making the case for him, so I, I don't know. I don't know where he's going to land, but if Boston took a took a flyer on him, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it at all. Let's wrap it up with Greg. He says I typically like to listen to post game interviews for opposing teams after a Celtics game. I notice they are hard to find. Is the Celtics media just exceptional at sharing content compared to other teams, or am I missing something? Well, you may be missing something. Uh, if you go to the NBA.com and their summary page at the top, uh, after the game, and it's, it's probably a couple hours after the game, by the time all of the interviews are done there, they do share them up there. Uh, not all of them and it's spotty, but also the answer to is the Celtics media just exceptional. i yes, but I'm not saying that for me. I'm not saying that I am part of, I'm exceptional myself. I'm saying that Celtics media the Celtics media landscape is exceptional because it includes a lot of different people. And so um, I was thinking about this when I got the question <clears throat> and I had, I see four distinct boxes here. I'm not going to call them tiers because I'm not going to say one is better than the other. There are four distinct boxes. Um, one is the bloggers. This is where I used to be back in my Reds Army days. Uh, the bloggers, uh, the young people uh, who are just sharing everything. And they are just great at sharing, like, I mean, everything. Um, you got uh, Cameron Tabatabi, uh, Noah Dalzell stand out. There's like a little crew at Celtics games with them and like the Celtics wire and the, uh, Noah does like Celtics blog. Uh, she's kind of like burst onto the scene as she shares everything, you know, and there's, there's always like a group of young blogger types that will aggressively share everything. Um, which is great because you want content and 
So they, they definitely do that. There's like the CLNS guys who, um, rise, like, I'm going to say above bloggers, not, not like they're better than bloggers. Now, again, I'm not saying anything here is better than the other. Um, <clears throat> but they, they kind of are towing the line between traditional media and, and the bloggers, they, they share everything as well, but they're, they're doing so with some added writing and, you know, podcasting and, you know, from the floor and all that stuff they do, you know, good job. Those guys do a good job. Um, so they give you a lot of options as well. There's the traditional media. That's where I fall into now. Uh, I've, I think I've fallen into three of these boxes, these first three boxes at some point over the course of my career. Now I'm very much in the traditional media. Um, I'm a beat writer. I'm, you know, I, I don't share everything because it's very difficult for me to do. I am, I'm, I'm more traditional media is more curated kind of stuff and more, you know, I'm writing like the narratives. I'm kind of like, this is my, my take on certain things. And being a beat writer nowadays is different than what it used to be, but there's that group here, like to the globe, it's the Herald, it's mass live, it's Boston sports journal. It's that group. Um, that gives you a different sense. And then there's the team media, NBC sports, Boston, Boston Celtics. You go to their YouTube pages. They're often sharing post-game stuff. There's four distinct boxes, four different groups of people at different stages of their careers. Everybody's sharing stuff. Everybody's got something to give. If you follow all four groups of people, you're going to see basically everything. Um, and that's, that's, that's very unique to Boston. And probably some other markets that like, I think the bigger markets like LA probably has um, a similar a similar group of, of types of people like that, the bigger markets where there's a lot of interest that that's kind of where you'll see it, but you're not going to see it everywhere. You, and you know, even in like New York with the Knicks, you don't, I don't think you see it quite the same way because the traditional media in New York is much, much bigger than so. So you kind of like miss out on some of the other stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think Boston is a, a unique situation and it's it's a really like everybody everybody involved has something i think significant and meaningful to offer to a celtics fan and like to me the the more the the more the merrier like i i i guess it's competition but it's also like we're it, it's part of the same ecosystem you are a celtics fan you want Celtics content and you got a lot of it to choose from, you know, I'm happy that you're choosing me to be part of it. And maybe you're choosing somebody else as well, but like, yeah, that's, that's all, that's all part of it. Like in we're I'll, there's, there's a big pie out there. And I think there's enough for a lot of us to eat. And I don't think any one of us should be trying to hog that, that pie. Cause the Celtics pie is, is big it's substantive and there's a lot there and I'm glad that you Celtics fans get a chance to experience a lot of it. It's, it's a very unique and I think fun atmosphere for trying to find content. I hope you've enjoyed this show. I hope this is part of your fun atmosphere. So, uh, if you, if you think so, if you've enjoyed it so far, you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Would love to see you on the YouTube page in the comment section. Let me know what you think there. I'd love it if you shared the pro the podcast. I know how to speak. Let everybody <laughs> know that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.